we will kind of talk about the world of the rigveda like in what world this rigveda was written now the rigveda is the oldest known vedic sanskrit text in fact it might be one of the oldest text known to man now it kind of is a collection of 10 books which we call a, each book is called a mandala and each mandala has around 1000 hymns and it is it is around 10000 verses in total now one has to note that the books 2 and 9 are the earliest and they are kind of hymns predominantly discuss the cosmology and praise deities especially the sky gods or the gods of the rigveda are very different compared to gods of the next all the subsequent vedas so the major god of the rigveda would be indra aswin your uh, varun mitra so these are very different god compared to all the other gods which came later if you kind of had noticed that all the gods that are mentioned now that you know them as gods but they're not worshiped now the gods of modern times in india are very different compared to the gods of the rigveda now the world of the rigveda the society is very nomadic and pastoral so the rigveda talks about a nomadic lifestyle a very pastoral kind of lifestyle with very scant evidence of agriculture but it mentions the plow and celebrates agricultural divinities there was a division of labor and a complementary relationship between kings and poet priests so one has to know that this world of rigveda is in stark contrast to the harappan world harappan was a urban world it was a completely urban world it had no nomadic lifestyle it had proper big cities till now in harappan we have found no evidence about you know kind of division of labor like there is no evidence of a king in harappan world so what we can glean for this is the rigveda was not written during harappan times at all there is a stark difference in the world of the rigveda and the world of the harappa now the problem is the earliest books of the rigveda mentioned ants antelopes boars deers foxes gazelles jackals lions monkeys now, do you see one thing no major indian animal is included in this book there is no elephant there is no tiger there is no rhino there is no uh, wild uh, cow the cow that we call so the world of the rigveda seems to be a very different world compared to what the india is today in fact a fun fact uh, ever so all of our uh, the tiger which is kind of a national animal of india has no mention in any of the older books of rigveda or also in the older uh, panchatantras ever wonder why yeah i wondered many times but i did not get the reason why the problem is that the panchat the oldest panchatantras all were written somewhere in what could be today afghanistan like uh, you know northern afghanistan and so that uzbekistan and all those all these animals are endemic to those places however tiger is a core indian and so you will find tiger in the harappan culture but you will not find tiger in the oldest book of the rigvedas and all that so in fact the lion only came into india when the harappan culture kind of you know fell so i will kind of explain to you how these two are related but a lion is a very recent entry into the indian subcontinent it would not have existed in india for like what not even 10000 years in fact now the second is the problem of the horse now rigveda talks about the horse in detail in fact the horse and the cow are the two most important animals of the rigveda the thing is a uh, horse was domesticated right in the place where the indo european languages originated like south ukraine north of the black sea in fact all the all the domesticated horses today are direct descendants of one horse from that those times all the domesticated horses of the world are directly descended from one horse uh pallav do you mean yeah. that um, all over the world uh, in the past times all horses are the same uh, from the same family yes in yes in fact uh from where from one location where this one horse was domesticated the descendants of this horse spread only this only those descendants of that particular horse spread all over the world 
that shows that domestication of horse was a complete fluke event no other culture apart from this one culture in the middle of ukraine managed to domesticate a horse it's so funny like you have all these big urban cultures of egypt mesopotamia china india aztecs however the one culture which domesticated horse was a probable like some semi nomadic tribe then uh, how do they classify the breeds so what has happened is uh, as similarly as we have different uh, breeds of a dog there are similarly different breeds of a horse however at a genetic level they are just different breeds like at the genetic level they are all the same like the genes of all the dog fa- families are of the same like from a pug to alsatian to a labrador to a golden retriever like even if they look completely different they all are the, from the same species similarly for all the horses like all the horses belong to the same species the thing is however there is very scant evidence of horses in the harappan world in fact i would for an example we have found Harap, there are around 200 300 harappan sites we found some uh, evidence of horse like bones there are only two sites that's it while of all the you know the proto indo european sites spread across russia which would be in thousands at all the burial sites we have found horses that is the difference of you know horse utilization by these two cultures now the horse sacrifice of a royal funeral which was mentioned in a rigveda this is the verse of the rigveda so like it says keep the limbs undamaged and place them in proper pattern cut them apart calling out piece by piece this horse sacrifice has been found the exact description of this verse has been found in sacrifices in the sinthashta and potaboka is one of their related culture graves they match the description where the lower legs of the horses were carefully cut apart at the joints and placed in and over the grave so you can see the importance of the horse in these cultures but not in the harappan world now another verse it says those who see that a race horse is cooked it says it smells good take it away and who wait for the doling out of the flesh of the charger let their approval encourage us it talks about the feast after a race now this public kind of feasting that surrounded the funeral of a very important person you have find exact description of these feast in the graves of sindashta so it kind of shows us that you know the importance of the horses and where did these horses come from like it is not an indian thing but it came from somewhere of southern russia so this is the region uh in eurasia where the horse was probably domesticated and there is a reason for that why it is domesticated there it is one of the largest grasslands in the world like continuous grasslands and so it was easier to domesticate the horse on its own that india and mesopotamia have very different climates even uh, egypt for those matters india is a tropical country while mesopotamia and egypt are uh, river valleys so we have very different climatic conditions compared to the cold and dry weather of you of you know kazakhstan and ukraine that is one reason why also domesticated there and not anywhere across the world and what about the chariots so the oldest chariot as i told you belongs to the sintashta culture the chariot dates around 2000 bc and it was found in each and every grave of the sintashta now one has to know that horse ox carts have always been used in cultures so you have harappan uh, using ox cart you have egyptians using carts you have all mesopotamian cultures using carts but those are not chariots what makes a chariot different is the spoked wheel ox carts have a uh, solid wheels while chariots have spoked wheels again ox carts are probably used you know for civilian life while chariots are exclusively used for warfare because one has to know that to train a chariot a uh, two man chariot is one of the most difficult things to do it takes years and years of you know experience and training to kind of have to create a professional charioteer 
So chariot is a very expensive piece of warfare. And again, there was no, there are always ox carts in Harappan. There are no chariots, while chariots were always existed in the Sintashta and Andorovo cultures. The cultures from where Indo-European language family spread. Guys, any questions till now on chariots and Rigveda and all? No, Pallav. Okay. 